Good morning and welcome to the next installment of the Esri Emergency Management webinar series. My name is Chris McIntosh, I'm the Director of Public Safety for Esri. And I'm joined today by Matt Cronin from Intermedics, Jeff Barani, the Technical Lead for Public Safety here at Esri. And we're happy to present to you today an update on the integration and functionality between WebEOC and the ArcGIS platform. Uh, the purpose of these webcasts, as many of you know, is to establish a regular cadence so you can plan for them ahead of time and hopefully block out the time on your busy schedules to attend these. They're usually the first Thursday of every month. Uh, and next, the next topic in a uh, month after next is RGS Web Application Builder and the Situational Awareness Viewer, so hopefully you'll join us then as well. The topics vary. There could be a broad overview of emergency management and technologies used for disaster response, or it could be in-depth to a specific application or workflow like we're doing today. We'll also always include a res update from our disaster response and special events program so, you can, uh, so we can share with you real-world examples of how these are being used and, how, and what best practices are being developed from them. Please let us know if there are specific topics that you want to hear about. Uh, we use those to help define the agendas for this webinar series so that we make sure that we're talking about things that are on your mind or that your problems that you're trying to solve. So on to today's topic, uh, the WebEOC RJS integration update. What I really want to do uh, before we get started, though, is to thank Intermedics. Uh, they've become a, a really great partner of ours, and we've been working together to improve the collaboration and coordination between the two products. And we're really happy to see how far those things have done because we have gone because we really feel like we're improving the capabilities that all of you have out in the field. Uh, the, the ability to share information from WebEOC into ArcGIS and soon vice versa uh, is not just important to both companies, but I know it's important to your operational capabilities and ability to respond to disaster. So. Um, we're really excited and happy to be sharing this series with Intermedics today with the WebEOC team and we'll keep you posted on how the collaboration and partnership between the two products and companies is, go is going uh, into the future. As I mentioned, uh, there is bi-directional support for WebEOC and through the ArcGIS extension that is, um, that is coming. We've also we've done several webinars on the ArcGIS extension, so we're going to focus on where the products are going and the new functionalities that are coming along. If you have already, uh, if you missed those webinars uh, that talked about the ArcGIS extension and how to use it, you can see the links there to look at the recordings of those presentations and hopefully get caught up. Uh, as always, all of these webinars are recorded and available for you to go back and, and look at again if you missed one or if you want to go back and review something in specific uh, from a webinar that you were, you attended. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to Matt Cronin from uh, Intermedics, and he's going to share with you that what's new and, uh, and coming in the WebEOC uh, ArcGIS universe. So Matt, over to you. All right. Thank you, Chris, and thanks for uh, giving us an opportunity to share um, the exciting work we're, we're, we're doing together. Um, <clears throat> so to get us started, the, the thing that we wanted to talk about first, uh, for the first maybe 20, 20 25 minutes or so, um, is to give an overview of the different um, mapping capabilities that we're building out in WebEOC and really how those capabilities are going to improve uh, the, the ability to integrate with ArcGIS in the future. But um, we also wanted to just give an orientation to these new capabilities in WebEOC so that folks that are working with the emergency management agencies, uh, GIS representatives, can have a good idea of what those capabilities are in WebEOC and how those capabilities work with, with ArcGIS. Um, so, so we essentially have done a complete re rebuild of the mapping capabilities that we have in WebEOC. In the past, we had two products, Mapper Professional and Mapper Lite. Those two products have been uh, basically rebuilt uh, into, into new products. And so we established a working group to help guide the features that we need to have in that. And what came out of that was essentially uh, two, addition, two new products. Um, one is just referred to as Maps, and that comes with any WebEOC uh, version 8.3 and higher. It just, it's just there. Um, there's nothing additional to install. It's kind of comparable to what was our Mapper Lite product in the past, 
um, in a sense that it's a, a free version, kind of lighter version. Um, so that's, that's that product. And then the MAPS add-on uh, does require a license for that. And that's pretty much an equivalent to what was Mapper Professional in the past. So there is a license required for that. Um, uh, but it's actually very easy to enable within the product. It's, uh, you just basically put in your key and, and you turn it on. And the nice thing is that both of these products can be used uh, in conjunction with Mapper Professional or Mapper Lite. And the reason we did that is because you know a lot of clients are using uh, these products and uh, if they want to upgrade to these new products and kind of um, become familiar with them and start looking at them, that doesn't mean that they can you know immediately switch without some impact to their user base. So that you can actually use these new products at the same time as your Mapper Pro and Mapper Lite products uh, while you uh, make that transition and do training and that sort of thing. Um, for, for this new functionality, it does require clients to be on version 8.3 or higher. Um, so that is a requirement because th these capabilities are very much integrated into the product, the WebUSC product. Um, we actually did a beta release in February and then in April um, last month, about a month from today, uh, we released this uh, new product, pub these new products publicly. Um, just to kind of give a rundown through the features, um, you know, between the, the free maps uh, product and the maps add-on, you can see the columns here show uh, the various features that are in this. So more modern user interface, JavaScript based for broader device support, higher quality geocoding, um, uh, geocode, uh, geocoding of records based on users uh, selecting uh, in the map, uh, zooming capabilities obviously, cu clustering of points that are nearby, the ability to turn board data on or off on the map, uh, the ability to view, add, and edit uh, features from uh, from board records, um, the ability to set a, a default extent and return to that extent at any point uh, while you're looking at the map, the um, showing of map labels, printing, uh, the ability to have lines, polygons, and uh, circles, and, and those sort of things. And that's that's a critical one, right? Because that's in the past we only had points, and now we have this concept of lines and polygons. And I'll talk to you uh, later in this presentation about how ultimately that's really going to enhance the relationship between WebUSC and, and ArcGIS. Um, this data can be shared very easily uh, via our WebUSC Fusion product. Uh, we have improved internationalization and localization support. So these are things that are uh, across all the, both levels. Um, when you look at the add-ons level, though, um, this slide in terms of user free features, these are user features that are only applicable to the add-on level. So annotations, a find address tool, a search tool, a measurement tool, a find my location tool, the ability to edit um, board records directly from the map, the ability to um, customize the pop-up, uh, the ability to have um, multiple uh, base layer support. So you have all your GIS, your Esri layers, feature service, map services, those things can all be added to um, the map, but that's only available with the add-on level. Um, you can turn layers on and off. Users can do that. They can change the opacity of layers. Um, and then they can, you know, the, the neat thing is they can simultaneously view whether you see data along with external data sources, which uh, many times is, you know, Esri-based data. Um, so those are the user-facing features. The admin-facing features, um, again, both products support working with Mapper Lite and Mapper Pro. I mentioned that earlier. Um, updates are just included with WebUSC updates, so the update process is easier. Um, uh, users can now, or administrators can now create an unlimited number of maps. Um, before it was kind of one, one map for everything. Um, you have a new set of icons available. You can color the map icon and color. Um, you can you know, have control over that, and you can do that based on status changes, and we'll show some examples of that in a little bit. Um, you can also assign these maps to specific groups that need them to manage, make sure that only the right groups have access to the right maps. Um, and then this gets into the features that are only available in the add-on level, the option to upload your own custom icons, um, the ability to customize your geocoding service. Uh, primarily, this is uh, using an ArcGIS geocoding service. Um, so you can do that if you have that available to you. Um, and that's pretty much very similar to what we had in Mapper Professional for that feature. Um, setting permissions for status board editing um, on the map, so who can who can make edits from the map, um, and then and then really the, the idea of this external data support, which is huge. I mean that's a 
that's a big part of what we're talking about here is this ability to bring in external data, uh, live feeds, services, and again, although we support five different types, uh, two of those are primarily uh, ESRI types, map services and feature services. So um, in terms of setting this up, very easy. You can actually, clients can just enable this within the product just by putting the license key in the admin area and hitting save. Um, again, uh, admins can create an un unlimited number of maps and be able to decide, okay, what board data do I want on this? What Esri, you know, map services and feature services do I want on, on this map? And so an administrators can cre create any number of maps and decide what, what all those things uh, are and then assign those maps to the right groups so only the, only the right users have access to the right uh, information. Um, the layer management, again, this, this is the five different types of ser services that we support, Esri Map Services, Esri Feature Services, WMS, GORSS, and KML. So those are the, the five um, types of services that we support. Uh, it should be noted, though, that in the past, adding map services and feature services was a little bit of a, a challenge. It's really easy now. I mean, you essentially just put the URL in there, uh, uh, select the layer if that's applicable, uh, select the image format, and, and, you know, for map services. Uh, but, I mean, you can really set up a layer within just a few seconds, uh, whereas before there were some additional steps that needed to be taken, uh, taken uh, and we've eliminated all that. So it makes it really easy to bring in your Esri data uh, into uh, the maps add-on. Um, again, as I mentioned earlier, with the add-on level, you can uh, configure your geocoder. So this just represents uh, where you can set up a primary and secondary geocoder. And if you're using an Esri geocoder, you can use either the single line uh, or you can parse the address. And, and that these screenshots are showing how, how that's set up. You, um, you do need to make changes. Clients do need to make changes to their boards to enable this new functionality for supporting these lines and polygons and, and uh, different features. So we've created a new feature tag. And that's what enables uh, the ability to store this data in more of a geography format. Um, and uh, you can add uh, this capability to any number of your boards uh, in WebUOC, to, to any board really. Um, and you can also, uh, we also have a number of boards that we've already pre-configured this, like our event reporting, significant events board, shelters, road closures. These are all available. We've updated them with this new tag and um, are available at no cost, and you can um, bring those in to start using uh, this new capabilities and, and get a sense of it. I'm not gonna spend too much time on this um, slide here, but this just talks about the different uh, capabilities within the feature tag that allows you to do some different things where you can, for example, tie it to an address. So when you type in the address, it will geocode based on that address. You can have it locate you um, based on the user's location as part of that process. You can define what fields would show as the label on the map. You can point it to a different map. So if you wanted a particular board to point to a particular map, you can do that um, you know, very easily. You can define the default behavior for a particular board. So one board, you know, like shelters, that's primarily points, right? Um, uh, for road closures, that's going to be primarily line strength. So you can define what is the default so that when users go to map their points, that that default behavior, um, you know, is, is, is uh, in place. Um, you also have the ability, again, to tie it to a field for the status, and that gives the ability to change the color and their icon on the map um, based on um, that particular status, you know, open, closed, full, uh, that sort of thing. And then just whether it displays as a link or a button in the, in the board. So those are just some of the features as, uh, uh, of the feature tag. Um, this is just a simple example, and we'll get into a lot more of this, but I wanted to highlight this one just because it, it's very it's uh, good to see uh, kind of it in use. So I've been working with uh, one client, and uh, this is based on an infrastructure board and um, and based looking at the EOC activation status. So um, the you know the red means that the EOC is activated, the yellow means it's partially activated, the green means that it's not activated, the check mark. Um, so this is just kind of one use case where you could, uh, uh, e each of these would be associated actually with board WebUSC status board records. And then as those uh, statuses change, you can see it in the map within WebUSC. But then the future is that we want to be able to take this data and send it to ArcGIS. So then you can also view that data inside uh, ArcGIS Online. 
Um, so we'll, we'll talk a little bit more about that as we, as we go along here. So you can set for the icons and symbology, as I mentioned before, you can uh, upload from our library or you can use custom icons if you have the, the add-on level. And um, you can also set the, the color very easily. This just represents the, the various icons that we're making available um, within the product. And we, can, we expect to continue to expand the library of icons that we'll, we'll make available. Um, navigation in the map is really easy. There's kind of a, a sidebar uh, window that, that can be uh, opened and closed. And then even uh, individual sections of that can be minimized and maximized um, to really make it a, a good user experience. You can also, again, set the map extent uh, when users come in to what you know, zoom level they're at. And then the user, just by a click of a button, can return to, to that extent at any time. Uh, and this just shows some of the, you know, again, collapsing of the various sections uh, of, the, of the side navigation menu. Uh, and then kind of finally, before we get into the actual demo, um, these are the various tools that we have and what those tools do. You know, finding locations by clicking, finding coordinates, doing different measurements, finding specific features on the map, printing the map, um, finding your location on the map to, to highlight where you're at. Um, doing various annotations on the map. So those are those different tools that are um, available as part of the map add-on. And then this is just kind of illustrates the, um, you know, kind of different key areas. So you have on the left here, you have your, your side navigation menu with your layers, your annotations, your boards. Um, on the bottom left, you have your, your tools here um, that you can turn on and off. You have the color um, and the, representing the status and the icons. You have clustering, so if you have many points in a similar area, you'll see those clustered together. You have the find my location function. You have the return to default extent function. Uh, and then when you have uh, a lot of different boards and maps open, you can actually see from the top here in the tab whether it's a map or a board. If it's a map, you'll see a little map icon that distinguishes that from a board. All right, so I think everybody's probably ready for uh, a demo now, so let me go into that. And please use the chat function uh, as you have questions, and we'll do our best to, uh, to answer those questions as we're going along here. So I'm going to log in to a, kind of a standard uh, type of position. And as we're going through here, the first thing I want to start off with is how um, well, you can see my tabs are remembered. So if you had some different maps open, you know, such as the, the map that I showed on the screenshot earlier, you can very easily um, navigate to that and uh, start interacting with it immediately. Um, but one thing I wanted to show is um, how does the user behavior change now in version 8.3 for um, adding uh, points and, and locations to the map? So I'm just going to add a, a little test record here. And uh, most clients have this. Um, uh, this type of board, activity log, 214, unit log, you know, a lot of different terms used for it. Um, but essentially, now you have this ability to, I could put in um, my address and, you know, find it based on that. Um, so that's one option. Or you can just go straight into the map and, and start interacting with, um, with it. And so now you can see you have these new functions now. So it, it did a point um, for my location, it pulled it up. But if I want to do a line, I could select the line here, and I can also do you know, line segment. So if, uh, if that's appropriate, I can do that. Um, so that's one option. You can also draw a polygon. So if I want to draw a polygon, I can uh, do that very easily. And, and then I save that. <clears throat> I'm going to go ahead and save my record here. And um, so that's basically how you would you know, add a record with this new capability. And you can also view. Um, the map directly within the board. If you just want to look at, very quickly want to look at that particular record, uh, you can see that in this case the record, uh, it's colored yellow, and uh, it's also, um, uh, that yellow is based on, it's actually tied to this um, priority field. But if I selected high as my priority, um, you can see that the color, um, when I go back to the map, would, would change to be a, a, a different color there. Uh, more of a, and actually the opacity is a little light, so that's why it's a little lighter there. Um, but you can change the colors at any time to be appropriate for your organization 
uh, that can be changed very easily. Um, so that's one example. Let me just show one other example and then we'll kind of move on. Um, but I can add road closures. Um, so if I want to look at a, a particular road closure, I can click on it just like I did on my activity log and I can see that, you know, that um, road closure where that, where that location is found along this stretch of I-20. And again, the behavior would be the same when I'm adding a record here. I'd have my, my in this case, I'm not putting an address because a lot of times road closures don't have an address that's very easily found. So I just click my map, and then because road closures are more likely to be uh, lines, it's defaulted to a line now. So then I can just go to uh, my particular location and just draw my, uh, my road closure from there, and, uh, and that's all I need to do. And then complete my record, save it, and then, um, and then again, the goal here is in the future being able to take this new uh, types of data, lines and polygons, and being able to share that information with, um, with ArcGIS. But I'm going to go ahead and move on just to cover because we we're, don't have a lot of time today. Um, but I'm just going to jump to the um, admin area. And uh, once you've upgraded, clients have upgraded to 8.3, you have this new mapping tab. So th this is where you would set up your various uh, uh, feature layers, uh, map layers. Um, and then um, so you can go in here. And I have quite a few um, set up here. But for example, if I did uh, look at some of my you know, Esri street map layer, um, you can see that really it's pretty easy to set up. I just select it as a map service. You could also do feature service, WS, WMS, DOR, assessor, KML. And then based on what you select here, the fields are actually going to change um, based on, on that selection. So um, to, to match what fields you would need to complete. Uh, in this case, really all I have to do is put my URL uh, ending in map server, select PNG32, which is typically the uh, works well, and then save that, and then that's all I have to do to configure my, my layer. So once my layers are set up, then I have this concept of map. So I have quite a few maps here, but if we just look at the Augusta map, which, um, uh, which I have, you can see I have a, a number of Esri layers added here. You can see there's only one that I have on by default. So kind of a be best practice is you can add a number of layers that you'd want and just have them disabled by default. And, and that way, they're available to the end user to turn on, um, but they're not you know, uh, loading by default. And then you can also reorder them very easily here uh, to, to have them in the order that you would expect. But um, as you're adding your layers, you just go in here and you select your appropriate layer. You hit Next. And then you decide whether it's enabled or disabled by default. And you can also set the opacity of that layer. And then you can also set the refresh time. Uh, to be, you know, every one minute or five minutes or ten minutes or whatever you want to set it at. And then down here is where you add your, your boards. So you have your various status boards available, and uh, you would set those up. And then actually down at the bottom here, it actually gives you a preview of what your map layers are going to uh, look like, as well as what your default extent is. So if I wanted to, to zoom out a little bit or, or zoom in a little bit, um, I can set that extent and save it, and then the next time that I open the map, it's gonna, that's going to be where my, uh, my default extent is based on the way that I've saved it there. Okay, so if we just uh, go and look at our, our Augusta map here, you can see I have the, the map icon showing that that's a, a, a map versus a, a board. You see I'm going to zoom out a little bit, which is where my default was before, which is a pretty good zoom level. You can see that I have a number of road closures here. Uh, you can see I have uh, this hazmat area is actually uh, an annotation that was added. So uh, I went ahead and added an annotation that's shown there. And then these are different road closures. And I can actually interact. If I have the add-on level, I can actually interact with these um, records directly from uh, the map. So if I wanted to go in here, um, this is just using a board view, uh, a view in this board, and I can uh, say that road has gone from open to closed. I can uh, change that from within the map here and then go back and then it's going to, uh, A, it's going to show me that I have new information and then you can see now it's changed to red uh, for that closure. Um, and then if we want to, you know, look at any of these other boards, you also have, uh, say, significant events and I can go in here and, and make updates to that um, uh, very easily as well and view that information. All right. So, I want to go ahead and keep moving here um, and show some, some different uh, examples of some other maps that we've created just to show some of the capabilities that we have here. 
Um, so I'm just going to just close down all the maps that I have here to clean it up a little bit. And let's look at Pittsburgh. So um, we created this uh, map in the Pittsburgh area. It's got some, some map services that are added uh, for such things as, you know, um, watches and warnings, the major rivers, which you can see go through here. You have the uh, county boundary around the, the edge here, and then your Esri uh, topographic uh, layer there. And actually, the user, again, the user can go in here, and they can reorder these things um, by using the arrows. They can also change the opacity if they want. You can see that um, they, the user can actually change that. Um, once they close it and reopen it, it will default back to whatever the admin set, set for them, but it does give them the ability to go in here and uh, look at various things such as, oh, I want to see weather, I can add my weather, I want to see the bridges, we can turn on bridges. Um, so these are all, you know, your various um, map services and feature services that you'd want to show in here, you can, uh, along with your WebUSC board data. So you have, uh, if I click on one of these clusters, you can see I have schools and hospitals. Um, if I wanted to zoom into a particular item, I can just click the plus there, and it's going to take me into that, um, into that school. Um, or that you know, that hospital. Um, I can also um, I could have also from the cluster clicked the uh, this little icon here, and that would actually open the board view uh, for that board. And if I wanted to go ahead and, and change that school status from closed to open, I can do that right from from the map. I mean, I can also do it from the board, um, but doing it from the map obviously has a lot of advantages and saves a lot of time. Um, I can um, select this to return to my initial extent. I can find my location. So I'm all the way over in Augusta, so it's bringing me down uh, quite a bit uh, over to Augusta there. I can just go back using my return to initial view. And then, uh, and then again, I have my tools for uh, measurement. Uh, I can also look at the um, finding a particular address using my search tool to search for particular rec records. And that will bring the results. Uh, and then you can click on those results, and it will actually take you uh, directly to uh, the given record there. Um, and then I also have a print option there. So that's just one example. I'm just going to show a couple more real quick, and then we'll jump back to uh, the, the PowerPoint to continue on. Um, so a couple other quick examples. I showed the Iowa map, um, a similar type of example of that, of kind of the, the status um, um, board. Let's look at the, our state maps. And we have one for um, Michigan. And so um, this is very similar to the Iowa example where you have the entire state. Um, and it looks like we've got some weather there. And then these, uh, uh, you can hover over and see the county name. And let's just say this is tied to an activation status. So let's say this county has um, become activated. I can go in and hit Edit here and say, yes, they're activated, and then hit Save. And then when I go back to the map, it's going to color that as um, uh, red, that they're activated. Um, and so you have a nice indication of that. Or I could say, OK, this, uh, they're partial, or no, they're not activated. And then it's going to give you the, the green check mark. Um, and again, the, the color, the icon, uh, what board this is tied to, uh, the possibilities are, are endless uh, with that. Uh, but let me just show couple other quick things, and then we'll, we'll jump back. So um, this is just kind of a US map looking at various hazards. Um, so you can see that I have a, a, my county's layer on, my state and county layer. I have some weather information. I have my um, watches and warnings that are on here. So these are, these are your, um, you have earthquakes. Doesn't look like we have any, any earthquakes, uh, luckily, in the, in the US um, showing. You could turn on your, your daily um, temperatures uh, layer. Um, you can turn on um, you know, any of this information that, that you've added as map layers to this particular map, um, you can add within here. So a lot of, a lot of capabilities here. Um, but let me go ahead and, um, and we'll switch back to the PowerPoint and keep moving. And then we can uh, open it up in the end for, uh, for any questions. So, um, the next item that we want to talk about is, is the bi-directional uh, data support for the ArcGIS extension. And so um, this particular feature uh, is a continuation of the previous uh, ArcGIS extension. And so 
Uh, what this is going to provide is the ability to have bi-directional support for adding, adding and editing records um, either in WebEOC or in ArcGIS. So right now the current version that we have is from WebEOC to ArcGIS only. You can't send uh, uh, edits that are made on ArcGIS back into WebEOC, and that's the problem that we're, we're going to be solving. Um, so we've actually done extensive changes to support this new functionality, but the good news is that the changes for the end user are fairly minimal, uh, luckily, you know, so that actually helps with, you know, minimizing the training that's required. Um, so administrators must enable this uh, functionality, obviously, to uh, have bidirectional uh, support, because in some cases you may or may not want that, right? You may, um, WebEOC administrators may or may not want updates from ArcGIS to be feeding back, so you do have the option of allowing for that. You also have the ability to set up, and we'll show it in the interface, the ability to control the deletion of records. So you could have it bidirectional and not allow for the deletion, or you could allow for the deletion. What's interesting about the way we would approach the deletion is the records aren't actually being deleted because uh, we like to maintain a history of those records in WebEOC. So basically what it's doing if you delete a record in ArcGIS is it just marks it as a particular value that we would expect in WebEOC. So many times if you remove a record in WebEOC, you're saying the remove field has a value of yes. So basically when you delete a field from ArcGIS, you would set that up in advance and that would be the behavior that would happen is that that record would have a remove field that have a value of yes. So we've actually done it kind of in a creative way that, uh, that helps to um, uh, do it in such a way that WebEOC administrators would expect. Um, and so that, that we have a history of those records that they're not just totally removed from, from the system. Um, and while um, you know, any incidents, number of incidents can be sent from WebEOC to ArcGIS, there is a limit uh, in this first version that, uh, of a single incident being able to feed into WebEOC at any given moment in time. Um, because uh, ArcGIS doesn't have a sense of incidents, um, the admin must define what is the incident that I want this data to go into. Um, and so that needs to be said and can be changed at any time, but it is limited to a single incident, at least with this first version, until we uh, find a way to, to better handle that. Um, but, but I think we'll find that uh, that's going to work pretty well for most, most of our clients. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and, um, uh, and show you this. So um, in this example here, um, we have a, a damage assessment board, pretty basic damage assessment board. So we have, you know, uh, an address, a map, what is the damage, major, major, minor, destroyed, and then comments. So you can see that I have a number of records here, uh, and let's just say, um, you know, this, this one was mismarked. It's actually shown as major, but you can see that by the description it's actually minor. So let's change that to, you know, minor roof damage. Um, and um, you know, we can make some updates to this and see this information come across. Um, so let me go to the um, admin interface here. So under plugins, you have your ArcGIS extension. And in here, again, it didn't uh, change too much from uh, the previous interface. Um, th these screens are actually all the same as they were before. And as Chris mentioned earlier, we've already, we've already walked through these screens in a very comprehensive way in the previous webinar, so we're not going to go through all of that again on this, but you do have those recordings to reference back kind of the configuration of those, uh, those pages. Um, so as part of this, um, basically all you need to do is select Add Feature Service. Rather than add a new one, I'm just going to edit an existing one so you can see the screen. Um, but you can see that these, these screens, if you're familiar, many of you are probably familiar with this, haven't changed too much. You give the feature service a name, you select who's the owner, um, you hit next, you would um, uh, give, select an input view. So this, is, uh, this input view is a new field, um, and that's required in order to populate back into WebEOC. So this would be some, something that you would need to set, is what is the input view that we're using uh, in WebEOC. So that's just kind of, I'll call out what the differences are between the previous version and this version. Uh, layer name, that was that was in the previous version. Um, this is really all the same in terms of the, the, the field and the, um, the latching longitude and then the fields that you want to send over. Um, but this is where I was talking about this ability to control the deletion. So you can enable that or disable that. 
if you enable it, it's expecting you to say, okay, I want this field to have a value of, and say it was a remove field with a value of yes, and that would be, um, that's kind of showing the example that I talked through earlier, is that you can control that um, here. But if you don't want to allow any deletion, then you don't, you don't have to select that. And then next, you would go to your incident screen, and this screen is going to be changing a little bit, but essentially I'm setting, um, there's actually going to be two, two columns to set this up, one to set the incidents going to ArcGIS, and then one to set the, the single incident that's coming, feeding back into WebUOC. Um, so this, we, we are in a kind of pre-release state right now, um, so, and we're going to talk through the timeline of release of this in a little bit, um, but, but just know that um, this, this screen will change a little bit, but this is where you set the incidents um, of, of what data is going to ArcGIS as well as what data is um, going to WebUOC in this, in this new capability. And then you can set any filters. This screen didn't change from the previous version that we talked about on our, on our last call. So, um, so what you, your end result is you have your various feature services that are shared, and we're going to look at a couple examples of, of these. Um, you can see that um, my damage assessment, initial damage assessment um, feature service is here. If I just want to open that very quickly, I can just hit this open in ArcGIS link, and that's going to take me right to uh, that particular feature service in ArcGIS, which is uh, very handy. And then um, if I wanted to go uh, look at the data here, um, you can see that I'm um, just going to sort by kind of our last updated, our entry date here. And <clears throat> you can see with the, the update that I made, I changed it to, um, to minor. And you can see that um, that, that update is there. Um, and if I want to make uh, other changes, I can. So let's just say, you know, I said, you know what, I found out that it actually was major. I, no, that was my mistake. Um, so we're going to change the comment. And then we're also going to change the uh, the status there. And so you can make various changes here and any changes that are made, whether they are made in this area or whether they're made in the, um, in the mapping interface. So if we go to uh, look at this data in a map and just going just gonna to take over in a minute to show kind of all the capabilities on the, on the ArcGIS side, um, but just to, just to kind of, um, as we're talking through here, um, if I go to, over to, to that data, um, you can make the changes directly in the map as well. So if you go uh, find your data and you uh, go to the edit mode, any of those, any of those record changes, if I want to make a change here, I can, I can do that as well. I can also add features. So if I want to go in here and, uh, and add a feature here, um, I can do this. And in this case, uh, I actually don't need to complete several of these fields uh, that are system fields. Really the only ones um, uh, that I need to complete in this case are the address, comments, and the, uh, and the status there. Um, so I can add that. So it's very easy to work within uh, ArcGIS to make those edits. And then um, those edits are going to flow back into um, WebEOC here. So that's, that's kind of one example. Um, that we have. And then another example is just, uh, say, a shelters example where um, this is another feature service um, that if we make changes to this um, either in WebEOC, um, and you can see that my damage assessment update just came across, and I have my record that just popped in there uh, that was actually added from ArcGIS. So this, this record originated from ArcGIS, and now it's, now it's in WebEOC. Um, and the same uh, could apply to a shelter. So we have our, our shelters list here. And if we go to um, the admin interface here, and let's go to our shelter service. I want to open that up real quick. And I can navigate directly to um, that map. Uh, and let me just go to my data here. And I'm going to, in this case, I'm just going to sort by uh, label so that my ordering is the same between the, the board. And let's just say we take our uh, a kid's place uh, shelter, and that shelter is currently marked as closed. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead and, and open that up. And I'm also going to change, um, let's just say we have an occupancy of five, and 
change our uh, availability to two. And that's all you need to do. And again, you can do that in many different areas in RHIS, but the result is the same, um, that ultimately um, those, those updates will flow across back to WebEOC. Now, it does take uh, a moment uh, or, you know, a moment up to a minute. So you can actually look at your recent history here, and you can actually see uh, all the activity that's going on. And you can see that, um, and you can extend this to, let me show the last 500 records. Um, and it's going to uh, show you all the activity that's happening every minute uh, between the two systems. And so within the next minute, you know, we should see that um, that update will, will come across over. Um, but let me go ahead and stop there and turn it over to Jeff to talk through uh, additional capabilities on the ArcGIS side in using these capabilities. Great. Um, thanks, Matt. And yeah, thanks, everyone, for, for joining today. So, yeah, a lot of really exciting, you know, capabilities and new enhancements coming with inside uh, th this this environment. A lot of great progress has been made. So what I'm looking at here is I'm showing the um, <clears throat> Uh, that same map service that Matt was showing earlier, but in this case, I've got it configured a little bit more with inside of a, of a, of a web map. So I've brought this map service in. This is essentially the WebEOC board represented as a feature service here with inside our web. As, as Matt mentioned, um, we can do edits right here from this environment. So this is a... Jeff, we're having some audio issues with you. Are you able to hear us? Jeff, are you there? If, especially from a damage assessment perspective, do updates from Collector from ArcGIS. So in this case, what we're looking at is a specific app here running on my Windows 10 tablet. I've got the collector application, you know, running. This is this is running on my tablet here. This, the same version of this app could run on your our smartphones, Android, iPhone, whatever the case may be. And I can come come in here and add in a, a new record. So if I simply can click a point on the map here and type in, you know, the, the information. South Roundup. And this is how I'm entering in uh, new data. Loss and then and then the type. Now here from the field, and if I've got you know connectivity to the internet, I can go ahead and submit and update you know that that information. So now we've added a new assessment here, uh, and that information is going back to the WebEOC board. So in, in this case, what we really wanted to do is we wanted to highlight how. Um, uh, this information can be, you know, edited in a variety of different uh, applications within inside the ArcGIS platform. So it's all part of the same, you know, ecosystem. All part of the same, uh, you know, two platforms working together, you know, seamlessly. So in this case, I've made an edit up here with inside the the collector application, and this this is represents the type of tools that folks can use in the field to go out and do their work, like you know, damage assessment or inspections of, of different types. I also want to look at the results of this information here with inside the operations dashboard. So we can see here with inside the operations dashboard, this might be a display that you have in your, in your command center, another view of the information from for situational awareness purposes. So we can keep track of what's going on in the field, what, what teams are doing, uh, where they're going, where they're doing, you know, work. And what we're looking at here is I see the most recent assessments you know up top so I can show the, the pop-up here for the, the recent assessment that was completed and note here that the uh, WebEOC has automatically auto populated a couple of things behind the scenes given the synchronization they put in the latitude longitude um, and marked it with a, a couple of other system elements that are needed on the WebEOC side this is nothing that you have to do this is just set up automatically you know for you so there's that new assessment that that I made a few minutes ago. We can go back and what Matt uh, did a few minutes ago and, and the, the new entry that, that he made. And really the key thing that we want to highlight here is all of this data is flowing you know, back and forth seamlessly between uh, our ArcGIS 
and you know web eoc so in this case that entry that i had made from the collector application is now showing up as a new record with inside the, the web eoc board so that's really the power of the new uh, updates that are coming in this you know update to the arcgis or excuse me the web eoc arcgis online extension is the ability to have that bi-directional updates any updates that are made on the uh, with inside the Esri environment, if you set it up, you know appropriately, can now be kind of brought forth here and shown here in, in, on, on the Web EOC side. So we've got that you know bi-directional update. So you know I, I really appreciate all the hard work that the, the Intermedix team has put into you know making this all kind of you know come together. So you know in my example, I'd shown uh, the collector application you know running with inside a Windows uh, a tablet. But the same type of thing would work on your on your smartphone. So if you're in the field, you know, doing damage assessment, you know, using that same you know idea of a board, any updates that we make here on Collector uh, get pushed uh, automatically, uh, given this extension into WebEOC. And so we're seeing you know the bi-directional support really kind of come to life with this new uh, development. So um, we can keep things you know in sync on both sides. So in this case, we just chose damage assessment as the example that we wanted to to show to really kind of illustrate from the app's perspective how this would work. Um, but this could be you know any of the common boards that you would want to enable on the web EOC side, whether that's you know shelters or significant events or whatever the case may be so you, if you can give your users a mission focus apps to update you know the appropriate you know data if you're sitting at the ESF uh, six desk for mass care maybe you do want to update the shelter information and you can either do that on the web EOC board side or you can do that within a focus app like the web web application builder to edit that board information and have that information show back up with inside uh, the, the web EOC you know, environments. So um, again, really the, the power here is the ability to uh, update and add new records from any of the Esri uh, apps that come with the ArcGIS platform and keep that information up to date and in sync with the, the system of record with inside the, the, the web EOC boards. So that, that concludes what I wanted to kind of show to really kind of quickly highlight things from, a, from an app's perspective. And now I want to turn it back over to Matt to kind of Talk us, talk us through um, some of the things that are that are coming uh, in the in the, uh, in the in the in the release. Thanks, Jeff. If you want to just proceed to the next slide, and I'll I'll run through that. Yep. So, so Brenda, if we can get back to my screen here. Thank you. Okay, go ahead, Matt. All right, so, so really we, we talked about two different things here. First is the WebEOC Maps and Maps add-on. That's already been released last month. Um, the ArcGIS extension update to have this new bi-directional capabilities, that's coming very soon. So um, basically we're looking at doing a beta release uh, in a few weeks in, in mid-May. Um, and then that beta, our beta releases usually run three to four weeks. And then, uh, and then we expect to release this publicly uh, around the mid to late June timeframe. Um, so this, this capability with this new bi-directional interface that we're showing, um, we expect to be released between uh, you know, mid to late June. Um, so that's, that's one thing that we've, we've showed, we just showed a minute ago. Um, but finally, the, only, the other thing I want to talk about briefly is that uh, the next major update to the ArcGIS extension is going to be to support um, the new capabilities that we showed initially with the maps and the maps add-on. So with the 2.0 update, we are, we are talking about limiting this still to point data. Um, we are working as part of the 3.0 release to add in the support for the lines and the polygons and the new ways that we're storing uh, geography data in WebEOC. So that one's a little bit further off. Uh, we're looking at the Q3 timeframe for the release of that big update, but that, that's where you're going to have the ability to take some of those examples where I showed entire state or a county with all the polygons of their cities and being able to take that data and send that to Web or send that to ArcGIS uh, or your road closures with you know your lines and that sort of thing. So that piece is coming a little bit after in the Q3 timeframe, um, but just wanted to give everyone a sense of, of uh, when these uh, products when we expect to release these uh, product updates related to the uh, ArcGIS extension. 
I'll turn it over to Jeff now to, to close us out. Great. Yeah, just, one one last thing here in closing. Um, we just wanted to highlight, that, and, and, and obviously uh, not you all don't need a reminder that hurricane season is, is coming. The, beginning, you know, June 1st, and just wanted to, um, you know, comment that if you need help preparing for hurricane season, if you want to leverage some of the maps and apps that we've talked about over the, the series of webcasts that we've done, like the operations dashboard for situation awareness, the impact summary map for getting a sense of the magnitude of the event of an incident, or being able to leverage capabilities in the field like collector for, for damage assessment or inspection. Uh, our professional services group is ready to go to help you uh, get prepared and leverage some of the new capabilities of the platform for you know, making use of, of these new tools. Uh, we certainly with Hurricane Matthew last year we saw a lot of jurisdictions you know, get value out of le leveraging you know, the, the new capabilities of ArcGIS to help them with a response to Hurricane Matthew. So um, in the so just a little bit of a public service announcement from a preparedness perspective. If you need assistance, we're we're here to help you, and our professional services team can can help you uh, get going. So we'll provide some additional uh, details and follow up uh, information in the in the post show uh, email that we'll send out, you know, after the webcast. But just wanted to uh, um, comment on this, you know, with with hurricane season here coming up in the in the next month. So with that, um, uh, thank you all for, for joining today. We've had many uh, good questions come in. We'll get to that here in just a sec. As, as we mentioned, um, we'll, we'll send out a, a, an email with a lot of links and kind of more details to what you saw today. Um, the, our next webinar will be right before the user conference so on Thursday, July 6th, and we'll talk about a lot of the updates that have come in the web app builder and the situation awareness viewer. Some of the new features like being able to, you know, timestamp and, and look at, you know, logging of data or print PDF reports. There's a lot of new capabilities that have been added and will come in the next release, and we'll talk about that on our next webcast. As a reminder, all of our webinars are posted uh, on the web within a day or two after, after the, the recording. Uh, you'll get an email with a link to this one, and then our, we've got a website where you can see more details of our previous you know, webinars. We're certainly open to more ideas and suggestions of, of uh, how to tailor this, this webinar series to help meet the needs of the emergency management uh, community so definitely you know, let us know with your ideas or, or suggestions and we provide some email addresses there and in a couple months there'll be time to join us in San Diego so we hope hope you'll be able to to see us in San Diego uh, but at either the National Security and Public Safety Summit the weekend before or or the user conference um, actually some of you may be together you know next week for the Intermedic Summit in, in Nashville uh, Matt and some of our my Esri colleagues will be there uh, talking about and demonstrating demonstrating you know the, the extension so some of the intermedics users will be at that conference so you can definitely get into to more details of the the exciting new enhancements and updates that are that are coming you know next week at Nashville so I'm sure the team will be looking forward to, to further conversations and and sharing all the, the details of the great work that's been done to provide these uh, additional capabilities that you know we've, we've heard is, is is needs from the community so with that I want to kind of turn it over to, to Matt and we want to talk about some you know, kind of common questions that we've seen here so so Matt it sounds like there's been a, a lot of excitement about some of the new tools and functionality that are there today um, but folks are also really interested in, in where you see this going some of the updates that are coming in the in the 84 maps release and, and beyond and how you're looking to enhance some of the the, the, the new tools maybe you can just uh, spend a few minutes talking about some of the highlights of what's coming and in in some of the, the features and the upcoming releases that you, you all have planned. Yeah, that's a good point, Jeff. Uh, we didn't talk about, I mean, being that the maps and maps add on are brand new products, we know we didn't hit every feature we wanted to do in the initial version. So we certainly have a number of features that we're, we've actually already started working on. Um, and would be in our 8.4 uh, major release that we're targeting right now for quarter three. And in that, I mean, some of the, some of the features that folks might be interested in, um, I saw one comment about the ability to embed maps and boards. And um, while we do have the ability now to uh, add maps to our dashboard tool, um, uh, adding, uh, embedding maps and boards is a feature that we're looking to add as part of that release. Um, a couple other ones of, of note is um, the ability to have legend support. Um, that's one that we, we definitely want to address. Another one is the ability to support pop-ups. So if you click on the, the particular uh, feature um, that might be coming from uh, an external source, like an Esri source that you would, we would 
uh, if there's pop-up data available that we'd be able to expose that. Um, uh, there are a number of things like that that we're definitely looking at at, at addressing. So if, if anyone has any, um, especially our intermedic clients, if you have any feedback on those things, definitely let us know because we're, we're constantly um, looking at um, you know, evolving the roadmap based on the feedback that we get. And we expect we'll get a lot of that feedback, as you said, in our conference that we have next week uh, with all our users. But those are some of the highlights. But there's definitely a number of, of different enhancements. But really, the, the idea is, I mean, the vision is that the more we can make um, you know, Esri clients be able to, to leverage that technology uh, either within our product or being able to get the data out into, um, you know, into ArcGIS. That's, that's our goal, right? We want to make emergency, emergency managers' uh, lives easier and be able to use these two technologies in such a way that uh, really is a, is a seamless experience um, between the two applications. I think we're we're really made some good progress so far. We got a little ways to go, but uh, we're we're definitely um, I think in, in a, got a good path in, in front of us here. So um, if there's any other very specific questions, I'm happy to answer those. But I'll stop there. Great, and and just to, just to clarify that that folks can use the the WebEOC data with the ArcGIS Online extension and the, and the Esri apps can just you know comment on that. That was one of the specific questions questions that we saw come across. Right. Yep. Yep. That's definitely something that's um, supported. So, so I guess one, one last thing is there, um, if, if folks have, you know, comments or feedbacks or, or, or suggestions or want to uh, get in the, the beta program for some of these things, is, should they just, how, how should they get in uh, contact with you or what should be the, their, their plan? To, uh, if they want to get and find out more details and get in on some of the, the beta developments of this. Sure. If they're interested, if they're already a WebEOC client and they're interested in participating in our beta program, um, they're they're happy to reach out to me and and I can add add them to our our list. And um, we're actually going to get started um, on that. As I said, at next week's our conference, and then the week after that is our target for for, for that beta release. So uh, if you're interested, certainly um, be in touch with me and and I can. Uh, uh, coordinate with you. Great, no, th thank you. Well, yeah, yeah. With that, um, we, we thank everyone for attending today. Thank you, you know, Matt and Josh from Intermedics, and sharing all the the great details of the hard work you've done to to deepen the integration with with ArcGIS. I'm sure the community will will appreciate all the hard work that you've done. And with that, we'll close it out. We'll may see some of you next week in Nashville. Some some of you in, in San Diego or on one of our, our, our webcasts that are coming up. So thanks, everyone, and have a great day.